Alright guys, I'm Rabia. And I'm Matt. And this is Sound Like on Anderson's TV. <laughs> Hi, Matthew. Today we are going to be trying to sound like who? Uh, one of the most heavily requested artists we've ever had yes. on the show, and that is... The Beatles! The Beatles. You might have heard of them. They were big once. Um, <laughs> well, still kind of are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're, like, obviously, you know who the Beatles are, biggest band of all time. Um, sounding like them is going to be a challenge, to say the least. They've yeah. got tons of different gear. There's, they had so many different eras in a really short space of time. Um, quite a lot of albums. Quite a lot of albums, and we're going to try and do it. And also, I think we were saying There's before... There's a budget of £1,500, pounds, not, the, to, not to forget. Yes, yeah. yeah, but we were saying before that we think that the bass part, the Paul McCartney element, is so important to the sound. Yeah, yeah no, totally. Yeah. That we're, what we're going to try and do is you're going to try and combine... John and uh, George. John and George, and I'm going to be Paul. Yes. It's a gamble, but we hope it's going to pay off. We hope you enjoy this video. Let's do it. We're looking for a guitar We're at this for point. A guitar. Right. So I'm looking for a guitar. Basically, John and George combined. I mean, George. Things like <laughs> Epiphone, Casinos, and yeah. Rickenbackers. Well, you used Gretsch as well. And Gretsch, yeah. And they're, the, they're the kind of things that stick out immediately. I'm going to start with, I know I'm going to use an AC-15 because that's, we used AC-30s and stuff back in the day, so I'm going to use a box amp. They did use Fenders as well. That's by the by. Yeah, okay. So we know what amp I'm using. I'm, there's a load of Gretsch just here, there are. and I've spotted this, for me, feels oh, like it's the Beatles guitar. Beautiful. It's 699. And to be fair to it, what is the name of this particular one? It's the, it's the Electromatic Centre Block. Right, so it's semi-hollow. Yeah, 699. It looks ve very similar to a guitar that I saw George Harrison using in a photo. Okay. Now, that might have just been the one-off <laughs> gig that Gretsch goes, can you use this for this gig? Probably not. But I think this could be it. I mean, there are so many to choose from around this price as well. I don't, are, you so want, many. are you wanting something that's, that's hollow? Yeah. Right. Uh, to be honest, like, if you look to my left, you can see there's just so many different ones. It's like a rainbow and they're, bridge. They're ranging from £300 up to, like, £2,000, £3,000. And obviously, without busting the bank, this is sort of smack bang in the middle of the budget. So I'm thinking I'm going to stick with this. All righty. I don't think we can get any other bass in the shop. This is an Epiphone violin bass. Um, if you ever wanted to get closer to the Paul McCartney vibes, it's I don't think it'd be made, possible. It's Chinese made, £300. It's a steal. If, if, it's going to be the closest we can get to the Hofner thing, so let's do this. So far, so good on the guitars front. That was quick. Beautiful. At this point, we normally go and look for pedals. We do. But the, Be the Beatles aren't really known for their pedal usage. No, and even in like Revolver era, it's all done in studio, so it's not likely that you could maybe pinpoint exactly the pedal or brand new. So if we find anything suitable, we just. I think what we'll probably do is get a couple of EQ pedals just to kind of give us a bit more flexibility with, with yeah. tone shaping. Yeah, I've got my AC15 out of the video room already. I've We've decided to go for a, a Fender Rumble. Because um, they're great value. It, yeah, it should, it, it should get me close. Um, Paul McCartney's used all sorts throughout the years, so um, yeah, I'm gonna give that a shot. Let's see if we can sound like the Beatles. Okay, see ya.
back in the old video room. Yes, we're back in the video room in this adventure, this tonal journey to sound like the Beatles. Indeed we are, and it's been heavily requested, as we said before. And it's been, it's been a big job. Do you know what the, the job of it that was so difficult is pl sort of playing in the right way? Yeah. And actually, because I mean, it's fairly, in fact, it's probably one of the simplest rigs we've ever had on yes. the sound like. However, it's been difficult getting the right performance and struggling. Well, and also, I think a lot of their tracks are either, you know, acoustic, there's a lot of piano in there. We found that and not having drums and vocals obviously skip stuff out, only having one guitar made it quite challenging. So trying to play songs that would be represented by a guitar and bass. Yeah, we kind of chose guitar-focused tracks. Yeah. And also the way they would have recorded it back in the day would have been really not how we're doing it. We're not, we're dual miking a cab and yeah, DIing exactly. the bass. This is not how they did it, so. And, and Pete handily found some kind of like separated tracks yeah. of some of the tracks, which yeah. was much helpful. So let's start with the guitar rig. I'm using the Gretsch Electromatic Center Block, which I used to tremendously double team John Lennon and George Harrison. Uh, made in Korea, it's an absolutely stunning guitar. Um, I say one thing is that obviously it's got the Bigsby on it, so it was pretty difficult trying to keep it in tune. But what I will say is that this literally is all I'm using, but it's going into the Vox AC15. But this is the Alnica Blue combo, because it's just great. It's extra like 200 quid. And more than that, I yeah. think, isn't it? Almost 300 pound more. Wow. So it's about, I think, 820, and then you've got about 700 for the guitar, so you're yeah. like about 20 quid over budget. <laughs> So yeah, I came in spectacularly under budget with this viola bass from Epiphone. Um, it's a chambered body, um, completely obviously reminiscent of the Hofners that um, Paul McCartney used to play. Um, it really is. You it's couldn't great. have asked for a more suitable and bass. And it's 300 pounds. That's ridiculous. It's, it's really nice to play, really nice narrow neck. Um, nice like flame veneer on it as well. Yeah, and it just it sounds really good. Mm. You, you would, you know, I'd, I'd, if it was twice as more, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, that is running into the Fender Rumble here behind me. Um, that's the 40 watt version. And that's only, I think, about 200 pounds. So mm. my 500 quid plus this, which is the MXR six band EQ. Um, that is basically shelving off a lot of the top. Um, it's been really important for the Paul McCartney tone, yeah, hasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> just to make it a bit, it's quite boxy. Yeah. Um, and tr yeah, just trying not to make it sound like too big yeah basically. too modern yeah, yeah. so th there's a vintage switch on the on the rumble which i've got engaged and we use them all the time yeah yeah yeah, yeah. sounds a bit like this between the two of us i think we got like pretty Pretty close, and I hope you think yeah. we got there too. And we just have to reiterate the fact that the excerpt we chose to use have all been are based around sort of guitar riffy stuff. Because, I mean, eras, different albums, and all that kind of stuff. It's been it would have been a mammoth task, but we I think we probably will do a by busting someday, which will be a lot more difficult because we'll probably challenge ourselves to do more albums, more sounds. That's it. So. Yeah. But anyway, I should probably show you what this guitar sounds like because yeah. I haven't done that. It's literally just straight into, straight into the amplifier, nothing else. It's probably not even in tune, but this is what it sounds like. Definitely feels like it can achieve the tones that you'd yeah, expect for Beatles. It's a pretty, pretty spiky tones we were getting. it's definitely like articulate you yeah. you feel like you didn't do anything too brash because you might just get heard and caught out and make a mistake but it's nice at the same time it rolls off and different pickups for example if you listen to come together the guitar is so so quiet in that intro so quiet yeah, you can barely hear it but i'm actually playing it adds loads yeah it starts that harmony but that's all you hear that's all i'm playing 
But the thing is, on the neck pickup, it's almost the perfect sound because it reinforces the bass. And that excerpt goes like this. And that just about concludes our Sound Like the Beatles uh, Without Busting the Bank episode. That's it, yeah. So if you like the gear we've used, or if you want to take a look, it's all in the description box below, so you can check that out. Let us know <clears throat> if you think we did a good job, uh, and if you'd like us to sound like anybody else in the future, write in the comment section. Cool. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. I've been Matt. I've been Rabir. And this has been Sound Like on Anderton's TV. Goodbye. Ciao, Bella. So let's start on the guitar. I double teamed John Lennon and George Harrison uh, with this particular guitar performance. So I'm going to start with the guitar, show you my rig. Uh, so this is the Gretsch Electromatic Centre Block and this is what I used to double team John Lennon and George Harrison. Um, and basically, yeah, it's made in Korea. It's a decent, decent guitar. Can you stop? Why? <laughs> So let's start with the guitar. I'll start first. Cool. This is the Gretsch Electromatic Center Block, and I use this to handily double team John Lennon and George Harrison. It's made in Korea. <laughs> <laughs> handily double team. I know. Okay, now. Okay. Double team with both hands. Okay. So I'm using the Gretsch Electromatic Center Block, which I use to swiftly double team John Lennon and George Harrison. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> it's not even funny. <laughs> it's amazing. He's lost it. Okay. Yeah, okay. He just, well, let's start that again. <laughs> it just changes it. I'm using the Gretsch Electromatic Sensor Block made in Korea, which I used to triumphantly uh, double team. <laughs> 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 It's tremendous. Triumphant. I'm fucking great. Triumphant and tremendous. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Let's, let's do this, come on. It's fine. It's fine. It's I'm, I'm good. It's already. What was triumphant? You are so good. Cool. We're never going to get through this day. It's so warm. So I chose the Gretsch Electromatic Center Block, which I used to exquisitely double team John Lennon and George Harrison. It's really, really good. Made in Korea. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, well the other thing is that like, Double teaming John and George has been pretty difficult because obviously there are two guitarists in the band. <laughs> Literally, he was on the precipice the whole time. I know. I, I can't speak. Hey everybody, thanks for watching the Anderton's Guitar YouTube channel. If you're a drummer or a keyboard player or interested in music technology, you might find one of our other channels interesting and I'll put details of those in the description below. If you want to find out more about the products we've just featured, please click here. If you'd like to buy a t-shirt like this, please click here. If you want to watch another video on our guitar channel, click down here. And to subscribe to our guitar channel, click here. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.